Hello and welcome to the channel Psychotech score 100%. In the last video, I had discussed about anxiety, anxiety disorder and types of anxiety disorders. In this video, I will be discussing about stress related disorders. So let us start the video and understand what is stress. Stress is a physiological or psychological response to the internal or external stresses and it involves changes affecting nearly every system of the body influencing how people feel and behave for example it may be manifested by palpitations sweating dry mouth shortness of breath fidgeting accelerated speech augmentation of negative emotions if already being experienced and uh, longer duration of stress fatigue it is also important to note that severe stress is manifested by general adaptation syndrome. By causing these mind-body changes, stress contributes directly to psychological and physiological disorder and disease and affects mental health and physical health, reducing quality of life. Now let us discuss what is chronic stress. Chronic stress is the physiological or psychological response to a prolonged internal or external stressful event, that is a stressor and the stressors need not remain physically present to have its effects. Recollections of it can substitute for its presence and sustain chronic stress. So after having discussed about uh, stress and chronic stress, now let us discuss about trauma and stressor related disorders. Trauma and stressor related disorders involve exposure to a stressful or traumatic event. These disorders were previously grouped with anxiety disorders but now considered a distinct category of disorders. So the disorders included in this category include acute stress disorder, adjustment disorders, post traumatic stress disorder that is PTSD, reactive attachment disorder and disinhibited social engagement disorder. So let us now discuss each type of trauma and stressor related disorders in detail. So the first type is acute stress disorder which occurs in individuals without any other apparent psychiatric disorder in response to exceptional physical or psychological stress and while severe such reactions usually subside within hours or days the stress may be an overwhelming traumatic experience for example accident, battle, physical assault etc or unusually sudden change in social circumstances of the individual such as multiple bare event and individual vulnerability and coping capacity play an important role in the occurrence and severity of acute stress reactions as evidenced by the fact that not all people exposed to exceptional stress develop symptoms however an acute stress disorder falls under the class of an anxiety disorder so there are some symptoms of acute stress disorder. It is important to note that symptoms show considerable variation, but usually include an initial state of daze with some constriction of the field of consciousness and narrowing of attention, inability to comprehend stimuli and disorientation, followed either by further withdrawal from the surrounding situation to the extent of a disassociative stupor or by agitating and overactivity. There are some autonomic signs of panic anxiety which include tachycardia which is increased heart rate, sweating, hyperventilation which is increased breathing and the symptoms usually appear within minute of the impact of the stressful stimulus and disappear within 2-3 to three days. The next type is adjustment disorders. Adjustment disorders can occur as a response to a sudden change such as divorce, job loss, end of a close relationship, a move or some other loss or disappointment. This type of psychological disorder can affect both the children and adults and is characterized by symptoms such as anxiety, irritability, depressed mood, worry, anger, hopelessness and feeling of isolation. The next type is post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. So this arises after response to a stressful event or situation of an exceptionally threatening nature and likely to cause pervasive distress like great pain, anxiety, sorrow, 
acute physical or mental suffering, affliction and trouble in almost anyone. If we talk about the causes, it includes natural or human disasters, war, serious accident, witness of violent death of others, violent attack, being the victim of sexual abuse, rape, torture, terrorism or hostage taking, etc. There are some predisposing factors of post-traumatic disorders and the predisposing factors are personality traits and previous history of psychiatric illness. So these two factors are considered as predisposing factors for causing post-traumatic disorder. Now if we talk about typical symptoms of PTSD, this includes flashbacks, the repeated relieving of the trauma in the form of intrusive memories or dreams, intense distress at exposure to events that symbolize or resemble an aspect of the traumatic event including anniversaries of the trauma, avoidance of activities and uh, situations reminiscent of the trauma, emotional blunting or numbness, a sense of detachment from other people, autonomic hyperarousal with hypervigilance, an enhanced stratal reaction and insomnia, and marked anxiety and depression, and occasionally suicidal ideation. If we talk about the treatment of PTSD, it includes psychiatric consultation, in which exploration of memories of the traumatic event and relief of associated symptoms and counselings are there. And if we talk about prognosis of PTSD, the course is fluctuating but recovery can be expected in the majority of the cases. Few people may show chronic course over many years and transition to an enduring personality change. After PTSD, next type is reactive attachment disorder. Reactive attachment disorder can result when children do not form normal healthy relationship and attachment with adult caregivers during the first few years of childhood. And the symptoms of the disorder include being withdrawn from adult caregivers and social and emotional disturbances that result from patterns of insufficient care and neglect. Next type is disinhibited social engagement disorder. Disinhibited social engagement disorder is characterized by a pattern of behavior that involves culturally inappropriate, overly familiar behavior with unfamiliar adults and strangers. This disorder results from a pattern of insufficient caregiving or emotional neglect that limits an infant's opportunity to form stable attachment. Now having discussed about different types, let us discuss about some stress reduction strategies. Stress reduction strategies can be helpful to many stressed or anxious people. However, many anxious persons cannot concentrate enough to use such strategies effectively for acute relief. Most stress reduction techniques have their greatest utility as elements of a prevention plan that attempts to raise one's threshold to anxiety provoking experiences. There are five R's which are used for stress and anxiety reduction. So you can also use these five R's for reduction of anxiety and stress. The first R is recognition. So recognition of the causes and sources of the threat or distress education and consciousness raising. Second R is for relationships. Relationships identified for support, help, reassurance. Third R is for removal. Removal from or of the threat or stressor, managing the stimulus. Fourth R is for relaxation. Relaxation through techniques such as meditation, massage, breathing exercises or imagery. Fifth and last R is re-engagement re-engagement through managed re-exposure and desensitization. So this was all about stress, stress related disorders and stress reduction strategies. See you in the next video. Till then bye bye. Take care.